All right, this video is going to be an introduction to reaction stoichiometry, which is the second part of our unit on stoichiometry. We spent a lot of time looking at formula stoichiometry, so percent composition, um, finding empirical formulas, combustion analysis, the mole, etc. Now we're going to take a look at how to apply stoichiometry to chemical reactions, balanced chemical equations. Remember that stoichiometry involves finding ratios or using ratios, and whether it's in a formula, the ratios from the subscripts in a formula, or as we'll see here, the ratios that are using the coefficients in the balanced equation. The approach is similar. We're going to use unit multipliers. So let's jump in. We've got a chemical reaction here, a kind of complicated looking one. Iodine reacting with fluorine is creating two different compounds of iodine and fluorine. So an iodine pentafluoride and tetraiodine difluoride gases. So the first question says, how many moles of the IF5 would be produced if 9.25 moles of iodine reacts with excess fluorine? Another way to say that would just be, you might ask, how, many, how much IF5 can you produce from 9.25 moles of iodine? You would then be assuming what this says here, that there's excess fluorine. For example, if you had a recipe for chocolate chip cookies at home, you might ask, based on the recipe, how many cookies could I make using five cups of chocolate chips? You'd look at the recipe and you could probably answer that, but you'd be making an assumption, wouldn't you? You'd be making the assumption that in using up those five cups of chocolate chips, that you actually have enough of the all the other ingredients in the recipe. You'd be assuming that there was excess amounts of all the other ingredients. All right, so let's jump in and answer the question. How many moles of IF5 from 9.25 moles of iodine? I'm going to set up a unit multiplier beginning with the number that was given. So we have 9.25 moles of iodine. And we want to know how many moles of IF5 would be produced. Well, the balanced equation says for every three moles of iodine that get used up, two moles of IF5 are produced. So there's a ratio there of two-thirds in terms of the IF5 to iodine. So we can get rid of the moles of iodine and we can replace it with moles of IF5, and we'll use this mole ratio from the balanced equation. There are two moles of IF5 for every three moles of iodine in the balanced equation, two and three. So now with a calculator, 9.25 times two divided by three we get with three significant digits 6.17 moles of IF5. Notice from a significant digits perspective that the coefficients are considered to be pure numbers. They're considered to be exact numbers. They have infinite number of significant digits. So we don't round off our, our answers based on the coefficients in the balanced equation. Second question, how many moles of fluorine would be needed to produce two and a half moles of I4F2? See if you can pause the video and set up a unit multiplier to answer that yourself. So if you want to make 2.5 moles of the I4F2, we're wondering how many moles of fluorine would you need? Well, Looking at the balanced equation, three or sorry, six moles of fluorine will produce one mole of I4F2. So every one mole of this compound needed six moles of fluorine. So you can see there it's going to be a six to one ratio. Using the unit multiplier, then we'll convert the moles of I4F2 to moles of fluorine and we'll use that 6 to 1 ratio that we saw in the balanced equation. You get 6 moles of fluorine are needed to make 1 mole of I4F2. So you'll end up needing 6 times as much, 2.5 times 6, you're going to need 15 moles of fluorine. 
the third part of this question. How many moles of iodine would you need to react with 7.05 moles of fluorine? Well, looking at the balanced recipe above, you need 3 moles of iodine for every 6 moles of fluorine. In other words, the amount of iodine is half as much as the amount of fluorine. So if you have 7.05 moles of fluorine, you'll need half of that, about 3.5 moles of iodine, to react with it. Let's set up a unit multiplier to answer that. So if you have 7.05 moles of fluorine, we'll convert the moles of fluorine to moles of iodine. How much iodine do we need to react with it? Now just a note about the vocabulary here. The things on the left side of the chemical reaction we know are called reactants. Things on the right side are called products. And so you might say that the iodine is reacting with the fluorine. Or you might say the iodine is getting used up. Or that the fluorine is being consumed. Notice that those words, reacts with, or gets used up, or consumed, they all sort of have the same idea that they're being used up, that they're disappearing. If you were talking about one of the things on the right, well, those are products. So you might ask, to produce those, or will be produced with one of these things, or will, will be made along with one of these things. So products, we, we talk about, we use verbs that imply being produced or increasing or being made. If you compare two reactants, you might say how much of this will react with this. If you compare a reactant to a product, you might say how much fluorine is needed to produce this much IF5. Or you might say how much IF5 will be produced from this much fluorine. Similarly, if you're comparing two products, you might ask how much I4F2 will be produced if this much IF5 is also produced. So don't let the verbs, the English language, bother you. Reactants are being used up and products are being produced. So there will be various synonyms that are used for those, for those terms. So in this question, um, how much iodine will react completely with 7.05 moles of fluorine. We look at the balanced recipe, 3 moles of iodine for every 6 moles of fluorine. And so just like we said, it's going to be half as much. So 7.05 times 3 over 6, or divide by 2 if you do some mental math, 3.53 moles of iodine are going to be needed. Okay? And finally, if 6.5 moles, 6.50 moles of gases are produced in the reaction, how many moles of fluorine were consumed, were used up, right, or reacted? Now, one thing that's a little bit confusing in this last question is that it doesn't actually say 6.5 moles of a particular substance. Instead, it says gases and are produced. So when I see that, I'm going to glance back at the chemical reaction and notice that we were talking about being produced. So I'm looking at the product side of the equation. And we were talking about gases. And I noticed that on the product side of the equation, everything there was a gas. So if we simply look at it as there's two moles of IF5 and one mole of I4F2, we could think there are three moles of gases being produced in this balanced equation. Okay, so three moles of iodine will produce three moles of gases, or six moles of fluorine will produce three moles of gases. Okay, so now coming back down here, you, you want, have produced six and a half moles, 6.50 moles of gases. How many moles of fluorine were consumed, were used up? So we'll get rid of the moles of gases produced, and we'll switch to moles of fluorine that were used up. And again, from the balanced equation, 
six moles of fluorine are consumed every time three moles of gases are produced. So six moles of fluorine for every three moles of gases, and it's going to be a two to one ratio, six to three. So multiplying through here, we're going to get 13.0 moles fluorine were used up. Okay. Now one thing I'm being a little bit lazy with here, and normally I require it, is to add little statements like that, were used up or were consumed back here. This many moles of iodine are needed. Right, just looking back at the question, how many moles of iodine are needed? So I usually throw in little phrases like that in my answers. So if you think you understand what we're doing, maybe you can <coughs> excuse me, pause the video and try this question yourself. So we've got propane being burned in a gas grill. There's the unbalanced chemical equation. And then we have several questions that follow. Now notice that I recognized immediately that that reaction is unbalanced. Being unbalanced, it's kind of like having a list of ingredients, but without knowing the ratios to cook with. So I can make you a shopping list and tell you what to go buy for dinner, but that doesn't really help you make the dinner because you don't have the recipe there. So the first thing you want to do in this, in this question is balance this equation. It's a hydrocarbon combustion reaction. And so I would balance it in order of carbon, then hydrogen, and then oxygens. So we have three carbons on the left and only one on the right, so I could put a three here. That'll balance the, ox the carbons. Eight hydrogens on the left and two on the right, so if I put a four there, that balances the hydrogens. And then finally, oxygens, we have three times two, we have six here and four times one, we have four here. So there's ten oxygens on the right. So to balance that, I'll put a five in front of O2. Five times two is ten. So there's my balanced equation. Now jump in and try those questions. So what would be the yield of CO2 measured in moles if ten moles of propane burns completely? The word yield here is being used in the same way of being produced. How what would be the amount of carbon dioxide produced? What is the yield of carbon dioxide? Those mean the same things. So you have 10.0 moles of the propane, C3H8, and you're wondering how many moles of CO2 would you produce if this burns completely? Well, from the recipe, we can get rid of moles of propane and we can convert to moles of CO2 produced. There's three moles of CO2 for every one mole of propane. So 10 times 3, 30.0 moles of CO2 would be produced. Okay, part B what would be the mass? Now, it's the first time we've, not, we've done a mass here, so measured in kilograms of water that would be produced if 75.0 moles of propane were burned completely. So we're going to take our 75.0 moles of propane, and we're wondering what mass in kilograms of water is going to be produced if we burn this. Well, the first thing I'll do is not worry about the mass, but rather worry about the moles, like we've been doing. I can convert the moles of propane to moles of water, since we're being asked about water. Then, I know, because I have a periodic table, that moles of water can be converted to grams of water, and that would be using the molar mass of water. And then finally, grams of water can be converted to kilograms of water, just like grams to kilograms for any substance. So from the balanced equation, the mole ratio is 4 moles of water 
come from one mole of propane. Right? You can see that in the balanced equation at the top. Four moles of water for one mole of propane. The molar mass of water, one mole of water, is 18.02 grams. And 1,000 grams are in a kilogram. So there, that looks to be pretty good. There'll be three significant digits in the answer. So 75 times 4 times 18.02 and divide by 1,000, I get 5.41 kilograms of water will be produced. All right. Part C, what mass of oxygen, and it doesn't say what units, so probably I'll leave that in grams, what mass of oxygen would you need to consume two and a half moles of propane? So again, we have, starting with the propane, two and a half moles of the propane. Oxygen is a reactant along with propane, so it's going to get used up, it's going to be consumed, and we notice from the balanced equation that five moles of oxygen get, get consumed for every one mole of propane. So back in the unit multiplier, we'll convert the moles of propane to moles of oxygen. Five moles of oxygen for every one mole of propane. The question though didn't ask us for moles of oxygen, it asked for mass of oxygen. So we'll convert the moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. And I'm going to leave it there because it specified kilograms. It just said mass. So I'm going to leave the air in grams. If you had to switch to some other unit, that would be okay. But we'd be doing X work. The mass of oxygen. Do you see why it's important to pull to put the kilo down? It's not just a O2. So therefore I know that one of O2 has a mass not 16 but 32.00 grams. Oxygen is one of the wrinkle elements. H O F B R I N C L. Those elements are all diatomic. They form they are molecules with atoms of one there by themselves. So oxygen is O2. So now 2 point times 5 times 32. And when you're here, think about doing that step. And by 5 to mole oxygen. And most oxygen is be 400 grams of oxygen. We're switching to two significant digits, 4.0 times 10 to the 2 grams of oxygen are consumed. 400 grams. Finally, what mass of propane needs to be burned? If you need the liters measured at temperature and pressure, STE, of carbon dioxide gas. All right, so this is the first time we've seen a volume, the liters, as TP. We remember that we have a unit multiplier to be helpful with that. 50.0 liters of carbon dioxide, and we will convert the liters to moles of CO2. And we can do that because we remember one mole of any gas at STP has a volume of 22.4 liters. So this is at STP, standard temperature and pressure, zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascals. Now that we've got moles of CO2, we can start making our way to the propane, we can switch moles of CO2 to moles of propane. Using the mole ratio from our balanced equation, you get three moles of CO2 for every one mole of propane. So coming back down to that 
unit multiplier, one mole of propane, three moles of CO2. The question, though, wanted mass of propane, so now I can finally switch the moles of propane to grams of propane using the molar mass of propane. So grabbing a calculator and a periodic table if you need it, propane has three carbons and eight hydrogens, so three times 12.01, the, the molar mass of carbon, plus eight times 1.01, .01, the molar mass of hydrogen, and I get that one mole of propane has a molar mass 44.11 grams. So I'm going to take my 50 liters, convert to moles of CO2, convert to moles of propane, and convert to grams of propane. So 50 liters divided by 22.4 liters, there's just over 2 moles. Divide by 3, there's 0.744 moles of propane, and multiply that by 44.11, there's going to be 32.8 grams of propane needed. That's how much would be needed to produce the 50 liters of CO2. All right, this video is getting a little bit on the long side, but again, this is either a review or an introduction, and the questions are getting a little bit harder as we go. This next one gives you a word equation. Sodium hydroxide is used to neutralize phosphoric acid. Don't let the word neutralize bother you. Because sodium hydroxide is a base and phosphoric acid is an acid, that chemical reaction is sometimes called a neutralization reaction. So really, this is simply saying sodium hydroxide reacts with phosphoric acid. So let's write a balanced equation. Now notice none of the products of the reaction were mentioned. Sodium hydroxide, I, I recognize as an ionic compound where sodium is plus one and hydroxide is minus one, so NaOH is sodium hydroxide. Phosphoric acid, because it does not start with hydro, then this is, a, this is an oxy acid. In other words, there's a complex ion involved. Phosphoric, the IC ending, tells me that the complex ion was phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. And acids have hydrogen ions, which are H plus. Since it's 3 minus and 1 plus, phosphoric acid will be H3 PO4. Now we can see that the reaction type here, using one of our grade 11 reaction types, is going to be a double replacement reaction. Sodium is going to go and bond with phosphate, and then the hydrogen is going to bond with hydroxide. They trade partners. Sodium phosphate plus 1 and minus 3 would be Na3PO4. And HOH, which is normally going to be written H2O, water. All right, so there's the balanced equation. Now, sorry, the unbalanced equation. There were three hydrogens with the phosphoric acid, and each of those hydrogens is going to grab an, a hydroxide. They bond together. So I'll put a three in front of sodium hydroxide to give the three hydrogens three hydroxides that three hydro hydroxide and three hydrogen will end up combining to make three waters. And then the three sodiums bond with the phosphate to make sodium phosphate. There's the balanced equation. All right, part A. What mass of sodium hydroxide do you need to neutralize six moles of phosphoric acid? So we have 6.00 moles of phosphoric acid. And we want to find out the mass, grams, I guess, of sodium hydroxide that was needed to react with it. So we'll first convert the moles of phosphoric acid using the mole ratio to moles of sodium hydroxide. Balanced equation. 
and then the moles of sodium hydroxide using the molar mass to grams of sodium hydroxide. So the mole ratio, we need three moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of phosphoric acid. And with a periodic table, sodium hydroxide has one sodium, one oxygen, one hydrogen. You add up their molar masses and you get 40.00 grams. So we end up with 6 times 3 times 40. So 18 times 40. And I get 720 grams of sodium hydroxide. All right. Now if you wanted to say 7.20 times 10 to the 2 grams, that would be perhaps a little bit more clear with the with significant digits, but 720 is fine. Part B, if 0 0.50 moles of the acid was neutralized, how many molecules of water would be produced? And this is kind of a, a silly question to ask, but it is possible to answer, so we'll jump in and do it. We normally wouldn't care that there's going to be this huge number of molecules, but we can calculate it, so let's do it. You have 0 0.50 moles of the phosphoric acid, and we're wondering how many water molecules will be produced. So let's convert the moles of phosphoric acid into moles of water. Since we were asked for molecules of water, we're making our way from moles of the acid to moles of the water. That'll be using the mole ratio in the equation. And then finally, we can get rid of moles of water and we can find molecules of water like we did in an earlier assignment using Avogadro's number. So one mole of phosphoric acid, looking at the balanced equation, produced three moles of water, right? So one mole of the acid, three moles of water are produced. And then Avogadro's number one mole of water will have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So the answer is going to be really, really big, 0.5 times 3 times Avogadro. And when you're using scientific notation, be sure to use the scientific notation button on the calculator. And my answer is... 9.2 significant digits, 9.0 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water are produced. And finally on this question, if you want to make 20... Again, we'll assume that we have all of the other ingredients. So in this case, we'll assume that we have excess sodium hydroxide. Later, we get questions where you can't assume that, and they're going to be harder. Okay? So for now, this is considered a simpler stoichiometry problem. So we have 25.0 grams of the sodium phosphate. So that's the salt produced, the ionic compound, above sodium phosphate, and we're wondering what mass of phosphoric acid do we need to produce this salt. So the first thing we'll do is convert the grams of sodium phosphate to moles of sodium phosphate. And the reason we're doing that is because the balanced equation has mole ratios in it. So now we can use those mole ratios to convert the moles of sodium phosphate to moles of the phosphoric acid. Since we're being asked how many grams of phosphoric acid, the mass, we'll first find the moles. And then moles of phosphoric acid convert to grams of phosphoric acid. So using the molar mass, grams and moles, is always a molar mass. One mole of sodium phosphate, periodic table is with me in my calculator. 
there's three sodiums, one phosphorus, four oxygens. So three times sodium's molar mass, 22.99, plus phosphorus molar mass, 30.97, plus four times oxygen's molar mass, 16. And those all come from a periodic table. And I get 163.94 grams. There's the mass of one mole of sodium phosphate. Moles to moles, this unit multiplier must be the mole ratio from the balanced equation. There was one mole of the acid for one mole of the salt. So therefore, one over one will be that unit multiplier. And then finally, grams and moles is again a molar mass but this time for phosphoric acid, H3PO4. So we have three hydrogens, one phosphorus, one, and four oxygens. So three times 1.01 .01 hydrogen, plus 30.97, the phosphorus, plus four times 16, the oxygens, and we get one mole is 98.00 grams. There we've got it. So standing back and looking at that answer, 25 grams, we divide by 163.94 to convert to moles of the salt. We multiply by 1 over 1 to convert to moles of the acid. And then we multiply by 98 to get the grams of acid. So we're going to need 14.9 grams of the phosphoric acid to produce the 25 grams of salt that we wanted. All right, I'm going to pause there and create a different video in a moment that's going to take what we've been doing and extend it to the idea of percent yield calculations. If you're having problems with any of these um, stoichiometry problems up till here, then be sure you've watched the video and taken your own notes and then come and see me with some questions face-to-face -face if there's anything that's still bothering you.